There we go. Okay, so let's uh, get cracking. I'm going to ask everybody to um, pay attention in a few slides. I'm going to be explaining how this is going to go. Um, as you can probably tell, this is the title of uh, tonight's webinar, um, How to Raise Capital in Times of Crisis. Dave and I had actually planned uh, uh, a presentation. He was going to fly out to Toronto uh, tonight, and uh, we started talking about it, I don't know, six, eight weeks ago. Um, not much uh, sign of trouble on the horizon. Um, and as we got closer and closer, we kind of talked a few weeks ago, yeah, we think we can still make it work. And then, of course, 10 days ago, two weeks ago, things really hit the fan, and we said we probably uh, should move this online. So thanks to you for joining us uh, online. Um, I thought I'd set the, t uh, the stage by wearing a hoodie, uh, let you guys know that uh, it's okay to be comfortable and be in your PJs if you're watching on your couch. Um, I'm going to uh, get going if I can figure out how to move my slide forward. Oh, there we go. Um, most of you or some of you have been to my, my monthly meetup before. Um, usually I have a bunch of rules. I'm not going to read them out to you. We also usually have everybody go around, uh, introduce themselves and tell us if they have anything that they want to pitch. Uh, we're also not going to be doing that this evening because it would be challenging to manage uh, uh, people virtually and 10, 20 seconds between each person, muting, unmuting, it would take forever. Um, I do expect that we'll probably go till just about nine o'clock. So feel free to stick around as long as you can. Um, if you want to participate, um, obviously it's, it's not in person. Uh, if you haven't used webinars too much before, pretty simple. Next to your control center for the webinar, for the Zoom webinar, you should see a, uh, a little hand icon that you can raise your hand if you have questions. Um, the way we're going to do it is that if you have questions while I'm presenting, um, I'm going to be doing an introduction uh, to Dave's topic for the first, depends on how many questions, I'd say 15 to 20 minutes. Um, if you have questions during my, my section, you're welcome to raise your hand or throw something into the Q&A, and I'll try to manage it uh, as I manage the rest of, uh, of the presentation. If you have questions during uh, Dave's presentation, you're welcome to put them in the Q&A, and when Dave's done, uh, we will have a Q&A, a, a dedicated Q&A uh, section of time, and I'll moderate that, I'll read his qu the questions out loud, and Dave will answer them. Um, I can't really ask you guys if that sounds good because I won't be able to hear you, so I will just proceed. If anybody has a real issue with anything, can't hear me properly, uh, if I have a booger hanging out of my nose, that's a bad joke actually to make these days, um, but I am by myself in my office, so we should all be okay. Um, just raise your hand in the, uh, in the uh, participant section and I should be able to check in and, and ask you what's wrong. On we go. Um, Dave is, uh, is joining us from BC. Uh, he's an author of multiple books, which we'll get, he'll get into, I'm sure, in his uh, intro to himself. And he regularly speaks with the University of British Columbia. Um, I'm gonna put Dave on hold, sorry Dave, for a few minutes because I would like to give a little bit of an introduction to set the, t the stage for, uh, for your topic. Um, I think it's obvious uh, if you're living, well, anywhere in the world really, uh, as to what's going on. Actually, there was that one actor who went on a meditation retreat for like 10 days no cell phones, no communication, nothing at all, and no computers. And he came out of it uh, a few days ago and just went, wow, what's been going on in the world? But I think most people know um, that there's a bit of a problem going on. And um, what Dave's gonna be talking about is how to raise money while uh, times are uncertain and, and there is a crisis. Um, uh, and, and I think he, he'll also touch on, or at least I will, um, that sometimes those are the best times to be investing in real estate. Um, and to be clear, uh, I think many people on this uh, webinar are real estate investors and uh, we'll use the term interchangeably real estate investor and then investors who would invest in real estate via us, um, uh, real estate investors. Um, we're going to cover, I'm going to touch a little bit on interest rates, um, why those are important. Uh, I know we have some mortgage agents on, on, the, uh, on the webinar, so uh, you can correct me if you feel like I'm wrong, though I think a lot of us don't know exactly what's going on. It's a, uh, it's a bit of a guessing game, but an educated one for, for many of us. So uh, I'll keep going. By the way, as you'll note, I've, I've put a bunch of text on each slide. Uh, if you get tired of looking at me, it gives you something different to look at and to read along. Um, I won't be reading from, from most slides uh, word for word. Um, it's more just to give you something to focus on um, to follow along. So of course, we all know that there's, uh, there's a very serious virus that's, uh, that's, that's frankly ravaging the world. Um, not many people could have foreseen uh, how much it would impact us and our economy, uh, even just a few months ago. 
um, but it has had a major impact, as many of you know, and it will probably continue to have an impact for months at the very least and likely years to come. Um, we're already feeling it in Ontario, of course, uh, throughout Canada and, um, and, and throughout the world. Um, so one thing that, uh, that is clear is, and this is uh, the, the Dow Jones uh, uh, movement between January 2017, give you an idea of the kind of rise that we had there, uh, a few blips um, along the way, and then a massive, massive fall off um, earlier this month. Um, I find a lot of people that I uh, speak to who historically do invest in, uh, in more traditional investments, stock market being one of them. Um, uh, when things get really bad, they rethink, uh, for the most part, I find um, what they were doing there in the first place. The first time I experienced this was, I wanna say eight, nine years ago. Uh, no, sorry, 10, 11 years ago. Um, there was a, a pretty serious uh, real estate, uh, a stock market correction. And I had people coming to me regularly, coming to my course at U of T or reaching out to me online or, and, in, and in regular business uh, conversations saying to me, listen, one time I can understand, um, but I've been bitten now twice by the, mark, by the stock markets and I'm not interested. I, I'm, I'll leave a little bit of stuff there to keep my advisor happy for uh, really blue chip, solid stuff. Um, but I want to be either investing directly into real estate hands on or investing uh, in some other way in real estate. So uh, I'll touch quickly on, uh, on rate cuts. Uh, as you both know, we, we experienced two very, very uh, quickly back to back. Um, and I don't know that it's impossible uh, for us to see more um, coming up. Now, initially this was uh, expected to stimulate the market, um, the real estate market, because lower, lower rates usually means lower interest rates. And, um, and of course that opens the door to more buyers. Um, what's interesting is that uh, uh, some lenders have uh, actually reversed course and uh, are protecting their, I think their, what they consider to be risk and of course protecting their, the profits that they're used to um, by not lowering interest rates um, uh, the same way that the Bank of Canada uh, cut rates. Again, I just wanna make sure that I am watching the, same, the right thing and that I'm not missing out. Okay, I just pulled up the Q&A uh, and I now know that I haven't ignored anybody. That's good. Um, if anybody wants to throw up a hand or throw out a, a hello in the Q&A, just so I know that it's working, that would be great. And I will keep going. Okay, very kind, very kind of you both uh, to say hello in the Q&A. Um, so, so for those of you who've been investing in real estate for a while, or, or even just being a student of, of the real estate investing world, you'll know that it, it is one of the safer investments. Um, it's always nice uh, that your investment can't uh, uh, get up and walk away. Um, an executive can't make, uh, a, an executive other than you can't make a bad decision um, that will fritter away the, the resources or the savings uh, um, of, that, of that company or make a bad decision that'll uh, turn the course of that uh, investment of yours into a, a, a direction that will end up being a bad one. Uh, you really are the, the master of your own domain with real estate when you're a hands-on investor. Um, and one of the things that I, I like to remember um, is when you're investing in, in real estate, um, bricks and mortar, whether it's retail, industrial, office, um, and land, those are a, a little bit different. Um, for the most part today, I'm going to be talking about mostly residential and, and small multi-res uh, properties. The commercial stuff is also good in its own way uh, or can be good investment in its own way. Um, when it comes to residential, I always say, uh, people are going to sacrifice a lot of things before they put their kids on the street. Um, in the Q&A box, does anybody want to, or if you want to raise your hand, I can unmute you. Does anybody uh, have an idea um, what would happen if somebody with a one and a half, $2 million house, uh, let's even say $1.2 million uh, property that they own, they live in it with their family. What would happen if, if that person lost his or her job or, or both uh, uh, income earners in the household lost their jobs? What would they do? I mean, would they, Really ride it out for five years? What if they didn't have a lot of savings? What if they were leveraged uh, quite a bit? Ty, I see you. I'm going to unmute you now. Tell us, Ty, what would happen? Ty? Hello? I think you have to unmute yourself, Ty. I just did that. Hey. Yeah. Hey. I would say that they would try for the mortgage deferrals. Okay, so right now that that is a possibility um, in certain cases that is possible that they would try that but but 
just assume that it's not something that would be easy to do or for whatever reason they weren't with uh, they had an alternative mortgage um, maybe a lender that a week ago was not going to be willing to do that um, do you think that they would just write it out until they run out of money and, and the lender takes back their property or what would they what are some other options that they might uh, explore um, they would ask for help from their family and friends yes but they're here by themselves in Canada they don't know anybody else in the world so then they're gonna you know they're gonna spend all their money and if that's not enough then the bank will take it i that's what i think you're right you're right so they and thank you for 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 putting your hand up there ty um so you're right they're going to um that's one possibility i would hope that many people who have been able to purchase a one 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 and a half two million dollar home for their family uh, wouldn't wait to the end they would try to take other measures so one would be a uh, mortgage deferral uh, if that's an option but what if they can't find a job in six months they're still gonna have to pay their mortgage um, so what has historically happened is somebody in that situation is going to try to sell their property, um, downsize into a smaller property that they buy, or, um, and we, we've seen this a lot in the last 20 years, whenever there's been a serious dip in the market, um, is to sell and to rent. And the point that I'm making here is that people are going to need homes no matter what. Um, very, very rarely are you going to see in mass, uh, people losing their homes or, or choosing to, uh, live on the street. So real estate in that, for that reason, that just as a fundamental uh, sheltering uh, uh, need that we have is usually quite stable because people will give up uh, their Starbucks drinks and going out for, uh, for dinner with friends once a week um, if it means that they can find a, a shelter for themselves and their family. And uh, usually, if, if done properly um, and cautiously, real estate can provide uh, reliable uh, rewards uh, and returns where the risk is not very great and the return is relatively predictable. Now, of course, and I'm not gonna do a, a whole course right now on risk versus reward, we do know that they balance each other out. The higher the risk, um, the greater, hopefully, the reward is. Otherwise, why are you taking that risk? And, uh, and for very little risk, uh, you're likely going to have proportionately smaller uh, reward or potential reward. Um, this is something that uh, a week ago was very true and I think is less true now. I mentioned earlier that the expectation was that um, more people would be qualifying for mortgages. Uh, things are so, so, so new and fresh. Really, we are Thursday. Um, I like to say that we're today we're nine business days into really the, the thick of it. Um, because I think really the, the Canada uh, and North America only really, really woke up to things are going to go badly and not turn around in one day uh, about nine business days ago. So um, we're really in the early days still, in my opinion. And um, and I think we're going to see uh, uh, rates go up and down. Uh, sorry, um, interest rates where you're actually that you're actually borrowing at going up and down in the coming weeks and months. Um, to me, relatively unpredictable. Um, one just quick tip of uh, piece of advice if you if you have something that you that you uh, if you're refinancing or you're buying a property and you have something good uh, go for it because um, I know I know a lot of people who've been holding out saying oh you know I've got two point I don't know let's say a number 2.69 on the table but surely I can get you know 2.59 2.4 2.45 if I if I just hold on a little longer um, up to you if you want to play that game and, and if there if you're not going to lose out by holding on um, then I guess it's not uh, uh, too bad of an idea. Um, to give you an idea of the uh, housing, the Toronto housing market um, from February uh, uh, from February to March, as far as affordability goes, um, the uh, if lenders follow uh, the rate cuts downwards, which they did for a little while, now they seem to be going up, and I expect that they will come back down at some point uh, potentially again you would see this happen. So I'll just go back for a minute. Basically, I often talk about a pyramid and the base of the pyramid becoming wider. So in February, um, uh, this is what we were experiencing as far as affordability. Um, that's funny. I don't, I didn't put this whole slide together, but I never saw that word humble, uh, humble semi-detached. Uh, that's probably a, an interesting uh, error in translation. Um, and if uh, interest rates uh, were to come down enough, we would see this. We'd see more people uh, in the lowest category of under a million dollar homes in Toronto, um, being able to afford uh, to buy a property. Um, this slide is something that I'm not going to spend a lot of time on. I'm cognizant that I'm taking up a lot of uh, Dave's time, so I'm just going to uh, keep skipping forward. Um, 
I think that we're, uh, I, I put up what an, an RBC capital markets economist had to say about this. Um, my own opinion is that things are so up in the air that it's difficult to know what's going to happen. Um, I certainly don't know for sure. Uh, what I think is that we're in a, in a real holding pattern. Um, I have some, as a broker, I have some clients who are, uh, and a real estate broker, by the way, um, I have some clients who are looking to push forward. In fact, we listed several properties on the market this week. Uh, literally ca condos and houses for sale and for lease. Um, some buyer, uh, some sellers and, and landlords are pushing forward with their plans to sell or lease and uh, some buyers and, and sellers are holding back and, and pulling back. Um, what you, I think you're going to see at least in the, the near term is a huge rise in the use of uh, virtual um, presentation software. So not webinars, but um, actually funny enough, last night I did an hour and a half web call with clients uh, husband and wife uh, while they're, after their kids went to bed and I shared my screen and we were looking over properties and I was giving them my feedback on properties they would earmark, uh, ear, earmarked as uh, interesting to them. So that is possible, of course. But what I'm talking about is more um, uh, 3D tour, uh, tour technology where you have uh, a company that goes in, just one person, um, they scan the place and then it's a virtual tour that's available online. Um, there are even some handheld cameras that, uh, that some agents like to use. And that's something that we're just starting to use this weekend on my team, where we'll go through condos and houses, obviously taking great precaution, but just one of us um, doing the 3D tour. It's a little camera that sits just above your head on a, on a selfie stick. Um, we do the tour, we upload it to a private YouTube channel, and then the potential buyer in, in that case uh, of that property can then tour uh, the property. And as the, the video is moving, this technology allows you to drag and drop and look up and look down and zoom in, is that popcorn ceiling or is it smooth, uh, et cetera. So I think we're gonna see a, 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 a rise in this. And another thing I think we're gonna start seeing, I just uh, heard of one being used earlier this week for the first time in recent uh, memory. The last time I used uh, what I'm gonna tell you about was um, probably more than 10 years ago and it was on, for commercial transactions and we used them a few times. Um, and that's uh, an offer that's conditional by the buyer um, conditional on the buyer seeing the property in person. Um, and I, I think that sellers who need to sell might not have a choice, but to accept it or work with offers that have that type of very open-ended uh, condition that's beneficial for the buyer. Um, and that would basically just be, you've probably heard of financing condition, home inspection condition, and others. This would simply be another uh, a condition in the, in the tool belt of a buyer or their realtor um, to say, look, my client's seen it virtually, they've looked at all the pictures, maybe I as the agent, I've walked through the property taking good precautions and done a FaceTime video with them so that they could see the property almost in person, uh, but they're just not willing to spend that 900000 or $2 million on a property without actually stepping foot in the property. Um, uh, especially when it's for an end user, a lot of the time there's a, there's a sense that you, you need to feel the property. It's more than just what you see. Uh, you really need to get a, a sense of how the rooms interact with one another and, and how you feel about it when you stand in that property. Uh, I'm going to move forward for you. And, and as, I've, uh, as, as uh, I've said on this slide, um, I do expect maybe not in the immediate, immediate term in the next week, but, uh, but two, three, four, six weeks from now, I think we're going to start seeing people who are going to have trouble and some people who are going to have trouble with their, with their homes. Maybe this emergency uh, financial relief from the government will allow some people to hold on a little longer than they might otherwise have been able to. But I think in the next one to five months, we'll probably start seeing some opportunities where you can pick up properties where the seller is, is in a bad place and they just need to sell. Um, I think it'll also, uh, there will also be opportunities at the intersection of somebody needing to sell and the average buyer, the average end user buyer, just not will, being willing yet to come out of their home, come out of their shell to go and see properties. So I think at that intersection, um, and that could be in two weeks, it could be in four or six or eight weeks um, that we'll have that intersection uh, occurring. Just four more slides, Dave. Yeah, you should be getting ready by now. Um, if, you, uh, if you were stretching or you were doing a wardrobe change, now's the time to uh, sit back down. Um, Last week, the, uh, the various um, real estate associations and regulatory bodies in my industry um, uh, asked and some, some of them mandated that realtors stop doing open houses, which I think was, was very smart uh, to do. Um, now, this week, the Ontario Real Estate Association has strongly suggested 
that agents, it was suggested that agents not do in-person showings um, if they can be helped. Um, there are some strategies that agents are taking, again, if it's very necessary for somebody to see a home. Um, for example, you might ask, why does somebody need to step out of their home these days? Why don't you just stay there until we think it's everything's blown over a little bit and everything's okay to go back to, to the new normal? Um, well, for example, if somebody sold their house last month, they've got a closing of their own home uh, on May 1st. Um, they're con contractually obligated to close on that transaction and they, they may uh, have some pretty large liability uh, that they're exposing themselves to if they don't close on that transaction. So if they don't get out and see a property, where are they to go? Um, yes, they could move in with family and friends if they have any, but that also goes contrary to what we're trying to do here, which is not have groups of people congregating and uh, more people than you need living under one roof. Um, so like I said, virtual tours uh, are available um, uh, sometimes. We've been doing them for the last five years. I would hope that more agents are gonna start paying for proper 3D tours as well as floor plans so that uh, somebody at their computer, whether it's at work or during a, a lockdown of uh, a virus um, can start touring those properties and really weeding them out because as a realtor, there's nothing that says waste of time for the clients even more than is going to see 10 properties when really if we'd had good information about those properties, probably six or seven of them wouldn't have made the cut and we would really just be going in to see three or four properties. So um, some of you, I know this is not exactly what you're here. You're here to hear uh, Dave talk about how to raise lots and lots of money um, from investors. Um, but this is what I put together to uh, give an idea as to whether competition will, will intensify or dwindle for buyers. Um, uh, I've told a few people, maybe even some people who are on this webinar now, that um, my, my personally th personal theory is that there was so much pent up uh, demand and even desperation for certain categories of homes in the GTA that where a month ago I was representing a buyer on a small condo and uh, there are I think 32 offers. Um, today, there might be five or 10 in two weeks, maybe three, maybe 15. Um, but I don't think that certain asset classes are really gonna have competition just go away. Um, we are humans, we do need to move around. Um, and like I said, you know, there are reasons why somebody needs to buy or needs to sell. If your company uh, lays you off, there are financial reasons potentially to sell. If your company transfers you or you decide to move somewhere where you think uh, they're greener pastures from an employment perspective, um, then you likely need to sell in order to be able to start your life up over there. And a little bit more um, that I'd put here. Um, I am going to cut myself off because I want to let Dave get to it. Um, I'm a big fan of uh, speakers introducing themselves, but Dave's resume is so uh, so impressive that I decided to grab some of his graphics and uh, and um, and introduce him semi myself. I hope he'll still do uh, the rest of it himself. So um, uh, Dave uh, is is a longtime investor in real estate, and he helps uh, real estate investors find investors uh, in their business or to invest with them. Um, and he's written several books. Um, I think this is a good time for Dave. I just realized I don't, I, I know I wrote that you've been in Canada since 2003. I don't think I've ever asked you where you were before that. Well, I am Canadian. So <laughs> I was born and raised in, in <laughs> <laughs> born and raised up in Northern BC, but I lived for almost uh, 15 years in Latin America, uh, 10 of those oh, okay. years in, in Costa Rica. So that's. Oh, que bueno. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. Podemos hacer uh, el resto de la. Never mind. I was going to say, let's do the rest of this in Spanish, but that's probably not a yes, good idea. No problema. Okay. Um, uh, Dave, I think I'm going to turn it over to you. I think you have control and you can uh, you can start projecting uh, your, your presentation. Let's see how much control I have. Are you able to see my screen? Because I can't. Yes. yes. All right. Well, thank you very much, Claude. I really appreciate that. And welcome, everybody. So, my original presentation was gonna be called How to Raise Capital Without Rejection. And we're gonna to be touching on that as well, but we're gonna be really diving in on how to raise capital, how to find investors right now in this time of crisis, because uh, this is a, an interesting time for all of us. And as Claude was mentioning, I think there's gonna be lots and lots of opportunity coming down the pipeline. So I'm gonna invite you guys 
to kind of sit back, jot down some notes if you want, but I'm going to be going through a whole bunch of slides very, very quickly, and I don't have time to go back and let you jot down notes. So uh, first of all, I want to thank Claude and the whole gang from the Boyron Group for putting this together and organizing this and switching gears. Really appreciate that. And what I'm going to say to you guys is, I'd rather have you focus on the big picture rather than trying to write down all the notes. So if you're interested, um, let reach out to Claude, let them know if you'd like a copy of the slides from tonight's presentation, and I'll be happy to provide that for you, as well as a few other goodies as well. But I'd really rather have you focus on the message than trying to write down a gazillion, a gazillion notes, all right? So why is it that some people are really successful at real estate investing while the majority are not. And very interesting, you know, the Pareto principle, the 80-20 rule applies to everything, including real estate investors. And it's very, very true. And you know this because you've been out to real estate investment groups and clubs and whatnot, that it's about 20% max of the active investors who actually own 80% of the properties. And 80% of the real estate investors are scrambling after the 20% of the properties that are left over. That's just the way the world works. And why is it and how can we get into that top 20%? Well, I love this expression, this saying by Stephen Covey, I am not a product of my circumstances. I am a product of my decisions. Now, this is true all the time. I firmly believe this is especially true right now. While everybody is freaking out about COVID, while everybody is in hibernation at home while everybody's got their head under the rock hoping that things will get better really our future depends on the decisions we make now and what we do in this time of quarantine as to whether we're going to get steamrollered over by this whole thing or we're going to come out of the other side and see the opportunities which are going to be going to abound and when it comes to real estate investors i found over the many many years that I've been working with, but I've been a real estate investor. I've been working with hundreds, if not thousands of investors across Canada and across the States and North America as well. I found that the successful ones do so in spite of many things that other folks consider to be setbacks or excuses as to why they, they can't get ahead. So I've seen people who seem a little bit long in the tooth, <laughs> a little bit old, getting into real estate investing and becoming very successful. I've seen people get into start real estate investing in their 70s and be successful. I've also just heard of the son of one of my clients at age 15, just bought his first fiveplex, not using mom and dad's money. So if you've used the excuse, I'm too old or I'm too young, that's baloney. Male, female, otherwise, it doesn't matter. It used to be that ladies could say, well, it's a man's world. It's just not fair. I can't get ahead. Baloney. I mean, I grew up in a household, my mother, and this is dating me, but my mother in the uh, 70s and early 80s, as a single working mother, built up a portfolio of over 50 doors in real estate investing, and that was 30, 40 years ago, all right? Race, creed, religion, thankfully, none of that matters. How much money or you have or do not have in your personal bank account doesn't matter. Even your personal credit history, uh, your credit rating at the moment doesn't matter that much. Your contacts, your previous experience, people have overcome all of these challenges, all of these situations, and become very, very successful in real estate investing. Now, they've also, people have also become very successful in times like these, in times of economic uncertainty. Now, the world hasn't gone through a pandemic like this in living memory, so none of us have had this exact experience in this scale but people have become very, very successful real estate investors in the best of times and in the worst of times, and we can too. Now, the other thing is I've found it really doesn't matter what kind of real estate investing you do, right? I've seen people become very, very successful with buying and holding single family homes. Kind of tough to do in Toronto and make those cash flow these days, but you know what I mean. Buying homes and putting suites in them. That's a little, that's much more dual. Flips, student housing, rent to own deals, commercial real estate, commercial residential real estate investing, development deals, condo deals, Canadians going down doing tax liens, tax deeds, self-storage facilities, mobile home parks, you name it, 
people have become very, very successful at it. So there's not one magic strategy that everybody has to follow to be successful in real estate. So what is it that really makes the difference between the top 20% who are super successful real estate investors and the bottom 80% who aren't? And I've dialed it right down to this. The number one key to success, it's quite simple. It's having the capital you need to do the deals that you wanna do. To either do a higher volume of deals or to get into bigger and better deals. And now, I believe firmly that now is the right time to lay the groundwork for hitting the ground running when this whole crisis subsides, which it will, and actually start taking advantage of all the opportunities that are, that are going to abound. Because like Claude shows, you know, people that have had their money in the stock market have just taken a major kicking. So I believe, I firmly believe that real estate investing done the right way is the absolute best vehicle for everyday people like you and like myself to get an above average return on our money backed by a solid asset. And that's real property, something tangible, something with control, something that is a basic human necessity. Everybody needs a roof over their head, just like Claude was mentioning, right? You know, if people can't afford their homes, they still need a place to live. They're gonna rent somewhere, all right? Now, everybody else is hunkered down at home, waiting to see what happens. Now is the time to do what the other people aren't doing. So one of my early marketing mentors is a gentleman named Dan Kennedy. I love his advice. <laughs> Take a look at what everyone, everyone else in your industry is doing, then do the complete opposite. You'll probably be very successful, right? So another way of looking at this is kind of like what Warren Buffett says, right? Be, be fearful when others are greedy and greedy only when others are fearful. So are people fearful now? Yes, they are. Now what he means by greedy is take action, take advantage of the opportunities. So while everybody is at home, hovered down, hunkered down, freaked out. I believe now is the time for us to stand up and to be leaders within our sphere of influence, within the people that we have immediate contact with, right? Now is the time. Now is the perfect time. To get your ducks in the line and start getting investors together and start getting the capital together to go out of the gate full speed ahead and take advantage of these opportunities. Now, if you aren't already attracting investors and starting to raise capital, I think I've got a pretty good idea of what might be holding you back. And what might be holding you back is the same thing that held me back for quite a while as well. And that is the whole idea of picking up the telephone and cold calling people or dialing for dollars. Plus the other thing is most of us absolutely hate the idea of coming across as needy or coming across like we're looking for a handout, looking, looking for where we've got our, our hat in our hands. We're looking for a, uh, a, the dole. No, we don't like coming out that way. So what I'm going to be suggesting, what I'm going to be showing you here tonight is a way to really kind of turn things around. Instead of us chasing after investors, instead of us groveling after people, hoping that they'll invest with us, what if we turn this whole thing around? What if we, we apply marketing smart, intelligent marketing. What if we apply this? What if we get people calling us up, texting us, emailing us, direct messaging us saying, hey, you know what? I'm interested. Tell me more about your deals. Isn't that conversation so much more pleasant? It certainly is. All right. So quick little reality check. And this is kind of dangerous. And Claude, please forgive me, but I'm going to say it anyhow. In your real estate club, I'm going to say this. And this is, this is my firm opinion. Nobody really loves real estate. And what I mean by that is nobody loves real estate for real estate's sake. I mean, if you had the choice of lying in a hammock on the beach, COVID free in tropical somewhere and having money magically fall from the sky into your bank account to create your lifestyle versus getting phone calls from your tenants having to freak out about uh, whether the rent's gonna be coming in, worrying about property inspections, doing all this real estate stuff, which would you choose? Chances are you'd probably choose the hammock, right? So what we love about real estate is we love the fact 
that it is an amazing vehicle. Real estate is our vehicle to create the income that we're looking for, the cash flow that we're looking for to, to maintain our lifestyle. It's the vehicle we're looking for to create the net worth that we want to have to create financial stability. Bottom line, this is the vehicle that we're working with to create that dream real estate lifestyle. Hopefully you agree with that. So as we go through the presentation, I'm gonna kind of use this as an analogy. Real estate is our vehicle of choice. There's lots of different ways to make a living. There's lots of different ways to make money. There are lots of different jobs out here. If you're on this call, it's because you've chosen real estate as your vehicle for creating income and creating wealth and creating your lifestyle. So what does every vehicle need? Every vehicle needs a driver. Okay, now we're starting to get into self-driving vehicles, but you know what I mean, play along with me guys. Every vehicle up to date, today's date needs a driver. Every vehicle and this driver in this case is you and it's I, right? We're the driver of our vehicle. Every vehicle also needs fuel. And the fuel for our real estate vehicle obviously is capital, it's money. We need money for down payments. We need money for repairs. We need money for maintenance. We need capital to get the deal going and to keep the deal going as well. So when it comes to capital, there are a couple of different choices. The first choice that most of us go to and most of us start with is we self-finance our deals. We save up, save up, save up, get enough money for a down payment, we buy a property. Or we already have a property, we get a home equity line of credit, we use that money and we go buy a property. Whatever it is, we use our own capital to get into that deal. So it's kind of like having a jerry can of gas in the garage, put that in the vehicle and off we go. Now, depending on the size of your jerry can or how much capital you've got, depends on how long you're gonna be able to go. But bottom line is, no matter how big your jerry can is, sooner or later, you're gonna run out of capital. You're gonna run out of gas, right? It just makes sense. And that's what keeps the bottom 80% of real estate investors at the bottom. They self-finance everything. They get stuck, they run out of capital, they run out of credit, they can't buy any more properties, and they stay stuck. I wanna help you get unstuck. I wanna help you create your very own gas station, your investor gas station. You can go to that gas station and fill up your vehicle with fuel anytime you want 24 seven. That's what this is all about because there is so much money out there looking for a good home, looking for a good opportunity. And I'm gonna show you how to access that and who to access it from, all right? So Claude asked me to tell you a little bit about my, my backstory. So again, as I mentioned, um, I'm originally from Northern British Columbia very small town, went to UBC, graduated with a basically asinine degree in psychology way, way, way back in 1990. At that time, we were in a recession and nobody was hiring BA psychology students for any good paying jobs. They still aren't, all right? But they weren't back then. So I said, what the heck? Why don't I go see a bit, the, bit of the world? Travel around Mexico and Central America for about two and a half years, had a lovely time, picked up the language, ended up in beautiful... San Jose, Costa Rica, picked up a lovely uh, <laughs> love for the country, fell in love with a specific person there, got settled down and I thought, you know, what the heck? Why don't I start a business? Didn't have any experience, didn't have any money, was clueless, uh, was in kind of, it's kind of poetic justice. I was a wetback Canadian in Latin America. I was working illegally, starting a business, all this kind of stuff. Had a language training company, got got married to my Costa Rican wife, had two beautiful children and lived there for 10 years and had a good, good life, a good upper middle class existence. But then in 2003, uh, my then wife and myself decided, you know what, it's a better place for our kids to grow up in Canada than in Costa Rica. And Costa Rica is great, but being a pasty faced white guy in Latin America, whether you have money or not, everybody assumes you do. And you're more of a target for certain things like kidnapping, things that you don't really have to worry about that much in uh, Kamloops, British Columbia, which is where I live right now. So we moved to Canada, but bottom line is I had to start all over again from scratch. I've been out of the country so long, I didn't have bad credit, I had zero credit. I didn't know, have any contacts in the new city that we moved to. I've been self-employed for 10 years. I was pretty much unemployable. I hadn't been able to sell my business in Costa Rica, so I didn't have very much money. And I had to move my 
wife and our two little kids into a crappy rental unit on kind of the bad side of the tracks here in Kamloops. And we've been accustomed to a pretty good lifestyle in Costa Rica with maids and gardeners and all that kind of stuff. So I was feeling the heat to get things going. So I was looking, trying to figure out what I wanted to do. And then one night, this is dating me again, but you know, you remember when they used to have those late night infomercials about really how to get rich quick in real estate? Well, I saw one of those. It was the guy was talking about how to, uh, how to make money in real estate with uh, li little or no capital, which I said, perfect, because that's exactly what I got by doing creative deals. So I sent away for the home study course, got it and cracked it open, went through all the cassettes and CDs and manuals and all that kind of stuff. This was all American stuff, but I had to, so I had to kind of Canadianize it. And I put it to use and, and bottom line is I did 18 deals in 18 months in the relatively small city of Kamloops, which at the time had about 80,000 people as the population. So I got very, very good at finding motivated sellers, doing creative deals, no money down type stuff. I got good at that. And I really developed a passion in Costa Rica and also doing this for marketing. So that kind of got the, the attention of a, a fellow that I was associated with who was starting a seminar company in Canada. So I took a few years off of doing real estate, helped him grow his seminar country, company from him and one employee to seven branch offices, 128 employees, $200 million in revenue annually, and being on the profit list of fastest growing companies in Canada four years in a row. So that took some time. And during that time while I was working with him, I co-authored a few books, started teaching and training people about creative real estate investing, and really developed a passion about teaching all of that. That's when that developed. Fast forward to 2010, got back into active real estate investing, got into what's called client, what I call client first rent to own deals. And like everybody, you know, at this point, I didn't have a really good clue about raising capital. I self-financed my first two deals and I ran out of money for down payments. And then that's when I had this perfect deal land on my lap, perfect tenant kind of buyers, perfect property, had everything tied up. All I needed was 85 grand to close on this property. So I tried everything I'd heard, you know, pick up the phone and dial for dollars, massive rejection, go out and network up a storm. So I polished up my 30 second commercial, networked up a storm, nothing. I thought, okay, I got an extension there uh, on the closing, but um, on removing the subjects. And I thought, okay, well, I'll just email everybody I know about this deal. And I did that. And all I did was succeed in really ticking off a lot of people. Bottom line, I lost that little rent home deal that was going to create a nice little $40,000 profit for me over two years because I didn't have the capital. I had run out of gas. And that's when I discovered what I call the big lie in real estate investing. The big lie in real estate investing is this. Just find a good deal and the money will magically find you. And I say baloney. That's not how it works. Unless, unless you have a group of prospective investors already ready to go in the wings. So when you have a deal, you talk to them about it and one or more of them is going to jump on the deal. So in other words, you need to dig your well before you're thirsty. This is a writer downer. When it comes to the chicken and egg, which should I have? Should I have a good deal first, then go raise the capital? Or should I have the capital first, then find the deal? Always have the capital lined up first. All right? Don't learn from my painful mistake. So it just makes sense. And going back to our vehicle analogy, you wouldn't leave on a long trip without filling up the car with gas, would you? Same idea here. Get the capital lined up. So that's when I decided, you know what? I got to really crack, on, crack down on this figure out this whole raising capital thing. So I invested a lot of time, money, and energy getting teaching, training, and coaching about this. Some of it was crap. Some of it was good. And then I thought, you know what, Dave? You know a thing or two about marketing. You've been marketing for years and years and years now. Why not apply marketing to finding investors and raising capital? Why not apply marketing the same kind of thing you did when it was you know, attracting motivated sellers doing those 18 deals in 18 months? Because again, all of those deals I did uh, without using a realtor, without surfing the MLS, without calling uh, for sale by owners. I did all of that by marketing and getting people to come to me. I said, why don't I do apply the same idea to finding investors? So that's exactly what I did. And I, through trial and error and a lot of, a lot of uh, uh, 
experience, I developed what I call my five-step money partner formula, which I'm gonna be giving you guys the big picture overview here uh, about all of this here tonight, all right? So there's five steps. And since then, I've raised millions and millions of dollars uh, for my own deals with investor partners following this five-step process. But more importantly, I've taught and I've helped many, many, many uh, Canadian real estate investors raise tens and tens and now at this point, hundreds of millions of dollars for their deals. So for example, and I'm gonna be sharing a couple of case studies with you guys quickly as we go through this. Uh, one example is Rick Wheeler. When I first met Rick, he had one property under his belt, which was negative $300 a month cash flow. So luckily, Rick was very, very teachable. He learned how to do real estate investing properly, and he learned how to grow his portfolio by bringing on investor partners, or what I call money partners, and using other people's money to grow his portfolio and share the rewards with his investor partners. So I asked Rick uh, when I was talking to him a little while ago, what being able to access investors' capital has meant for his businesses. So you guys have a quick listen to this. Please keep in mind the video quality is gonna be poor. Probably the audio quality won't be that great as well, but have a listen to this and just pay attention to the message, please. Oops. Let's go back one. Let's try to click it on here. There was absolutely zero way I could put the deal together on my own. Didn't have the finances or couldn't qualify for another mortgage, whatever it is. Um, you know, so I would have had to pass on deals that uh, were great opportunities if I hadn't, uh, hadn't had investors on board. So that goes exactly to that point. When should you have the investors on board? Have your investors on board before you're running out looking at opportunities. Have people lined up who are ready to invest with you so when those opportunities come, you can take advantage of them. And that's exactly what Rick did. So Rick started focusing on single family homes that he could put basement suites in. So basically the Burr strategy. Uh, he's based in Edmonton, Alberta. Last time I talked to Rick, he had 19 of these properties going, each one of them purchased with an investor partner. And because of the way he did the strategy, even after he had paid all of his expenses and paid his investor partners out, he was averaging eight to $900 a month per property in positive cash flow. And that was at the, at the depths of the, of the last recession in Alberta. So if you can do that in Alberta, uh, it's it definitely that shows how real estate is a much more solid asset than many other things. All right. So that is the possibility. That's an example of the possibility. Once you understand how to attract investors and raise capital. So it really is. It's up to you. You can stay small and self finance and do deals onesie twosie every decade or so, which isn't going to accomplish what you want, or you can accomplish your goals in real estate investing, create that cash flow and that net worth that you're looking for by bringing on investor partners and partnering up with people. It's like having your own sports car. It's gonna get you to your goal much, much faster and it's gonna get you there in style and you can have a lot more fun, all right? So personally, I went from doing creative deals, then I spent a few years doing uh, rent-to-own deals and more recently I've become involved um, as a passive partner in apartment building deals. I'm much more interested in multifamily properties personally and a few years ago, we applied this five-step formula very, very quickly, raised over $800,000 with five investor partners. We bought a 54-unit apartment building complex outside of Ottawa in a small town called Smith's Falls. And the five-year projections on that property, cash flow over that time, $355,000, mortgage pay down over $485,000, appreciation at 4%, which was very conservative. It's actually been higher than that, over a million dollars total potential revenue, total potential profits, I should say, $1.8 million on this property. Now, I'm not saying this to brag. I'm just telling you that if you are able to do either a higher volume of deals or start getting into bigger deals, that is going to get you where you want to go financially so much faster. It's just logical. So that first round works so well. Less than a year later, we were able to rinse and repeat and very, very quickly raised $2.1 million for a brand new deal. And here's the cool thing. Here's what, how this really applies to today. Excuse me, as we raise that capital, 
all by doing virtual presentations. None of this was a face-to-face, knee-to-knee meeting with anybody. So that's one of the reasons why I think right now is the perfect time to lay the foundation for your real estate investing for when the COVID crisis is over. All right, that's what it's all about, okay? So it's all about using other people's money to do more and bigger deals. And you guys, I'm gonna give you as much information as I can in about 60, 70 minutes, but there's only so much I can do. So what I'm going to be doing and offering is if you're really interested in finding out more, (laughs) originally I was gonna come out to Toronto and do a two day workshop on this. Obviously that's not gonna happen. So what I'm gonna be doing is I'm gonna be doing a virtual one day workshop on this on Saturday, April the 4th. And because you're you're friends of Claude's and you're part of the educated uh, approach to investing, I'm gonna make you a special, special offer if you're really interested in digging in deeper on this, all right? But let's jump back into things. Let's go over this whole five-step money partner formula. I'm gonna encourage you to type in any questions that you have in the question box. Claude is gonna help me out. He's gonna moderate the questions. I might answer some of them as we're going through the presentation, but go ahead, type them in. And then at the end of the presentation, we'll open up for Q&A, okay, you guys? So chances are you're facing some of these problems. First of all, you probably don't have the capital that you want to have to do as many or big of deals as you'd like to. You're not sure how to get the word out about what you are up to with real estate investing. You're worried about who you should be talking to and who you should avoid talking to as potential investors, as potential money partners. This is something you need to be concerned about because you don't want to get in trouble with the Ontario Security Commission because they are pretty nasty. All right. Now, in today's COVID situation, you're not sure if now is the right time to be talking about investing with people. That's one of the things that's probably top of your mind right now. You're not sure how to approach people about investing. You don't want to come across as needy or creepy. If people do say, hey, you know what, I'm interested, you might not be sure about what to say or what to do in that situation. And bottom line, right now you got a lot on your mind and you don't want to spend a lot of time, waste a lot of time, money and effort trying to figure this out like I did. All right. So as we go through this, I'm going to share a few different case studies with you. One of my favorite is Kathy Long. Kathy found herself years ago uh, at the wrong end of a divorce. She was a, became a, overnight became a single mom with three teenage kids to raise on a secretary's salary. And that was the, the breaking point. That was the straw that broke the camel's back. And Kathy said, you know what? I'm tired of this kind of life. There has to be a better way. And she'd heard about real estate investing. She got motivated. She got inspired. She got educated. More importantly, she took massive action. And amazingly, she was able to buy 21 rental units in less than two years. Again, a lot of these were done with investor partners. She was able to leave her job. She was able to become a full-time real estate entrepreneur. She was able to create an amazing cash flow, an amazing you know, comparatively net worth. She's now a multimillionaire thanks to real estate investing. And that's all because she dialed in on real estate and she dialed in on doing it with other people's money. That's what it's all about. All right. Now let's dive into the, the, the nuts and bolts of this five-step process. You guys remember, if you'd like to get a copy of the slides from tonight's presentation, just reach out to Claude's team and I'll make sure you get a copy of all of these because we're going to go through a lot of stuff really, really quickly. All right. So there are five simple steps to this process, but there's a bit involved with each step. So step number one is all about who are we going to focus on as our prospective investors? Who is this, what I'll call target group of people going to be? Because I'm going to suggest you know, if we get laser focus on a relatively small group of people, we're going to have a lot more success. So it's all about how to create, how do we create this list of prospective investors? And there's a few choices, right? When it comes to raising capital, you might decide like a lot of people do when they're initially starting with this, well, you know what? I'll just talk to everybody and anybody about my deals and hopefully somebody will invest with me. So I see a lot of people these days posting deals on Facebook saying, Hey, I've got this great deal. It's going to return, you know, generate these kind of returns. Private message me if you're interested. That's a big mistake. You guys, big, big, big mistake. 
So I think the worst thing you can do is go out to the general public trying to raise capital for several reasons, all right? First reason, reason is just logic. So logic says, you know, for somebody to invest 75, 100, 150, $200,000 with you, chances are they're gonna need to know you, they're gonna need to like you, and they're gonna need to trust you with their capital. Does that make sense? Know, like, and trust. If you're going out to a brand new stranger, somebody who doesn't know you from Adam or Eve, you don't have any of those. They don't know you, they don't like you, and they sure as hell don't trust you with their 100, 150, $200,000. Does that make sense? So that's reason number one. Reason number two is the Ontario Securities Commission. Because the Ontario Securities Commission, caveat here, I'm not a lawyer, I'm not an accountant, I'm not a security specialist, I'm sharing my understanding, all right? My understanding is the Ontario Securities Commission says, you and I as mom and pop real estate entrepreneurs, we are not allowed to raise capital from the general public unless we are either licensed to do so. So for example, a mortgage broker, a stock broker, a financial planner, these kind of folks, typically people who are working for the big banks and the big financial institutions, they can get capital from the general public. They're licensed to do so. So unless you got one of those licenses, you're not allowed to do it. Or the other thing you can do is you can get an offering memorandum. Now that could be a good idea if you're working on a really, really big deal, but there's a lot of expense and a lot of red tape involved to do that kind of thing, all right? So let's just say strangers, the general public are off the table. Does that make sense, you guys? So what else does that leave us? Well, we could go after accredited investors because the Ontario Securities Commission says, hey, you know what? There is an exception to that rule. If you get an accredited investor on board as a, an investor, that's no problem because an accredited investor is a little bit different in every province, but basically very, very high income, high net worth individuals. So when I think about your doctor, perhaps your dentist, very successful CEOs of companies, very successful entrepreneurs, you know, typically it's people who are making 200 grand or more a year, 300 grand, $300,000 or more a year as a couple, net worth of $5 million plus, et cetera, that kind of thing. So the, the Securities Commission says these people make enough money and they're smart enough with their money, they can invest it wherever the heck they want. So we can have them as investor partners. So, hey, if you know a bunch of accredited investors, awesome, go for it. Challenge is most of us don't know that many accredited investors. And the second challenge is most accredited investors have everybody going after them. So it's very, very hard to get their attention. Does that make sense? All right, so what does that leave you and I as mom and pop real estate entrepreneurs? Well, luckily, there's still a lot of room. Luckily, in fact, I think this is actually the best group to start with. The Securities Commission says, and again, you guys, I'm giving my opinion. The Securities Commission says, you are allowed to bring on as investor partners, close friends, family, and business associates. That could be uh, employees, coworkers, customers, clients, people that you have a pretty close relationship with. Where the gray area is, is, what is what's defined as close, all right? But bottom line is, what I'm gonna suggest you do is focus on those people that you have that pre-existing relationship with. You notice that this picture is kind of a big, warm, fuzzy, friendly picture, because that's the feeling you should have about this group of people. They're people that you have that pre-existing relationship with. And what I'm gonna suggest is let's come up with a group, a target group of 200 of these people. If you're gonna write something down, write 200 is our target group, all right? Now, you might be, don't freak out about that number yet. And a, and a few of you, if I could see you live on the camera, might be giving me this kind of look. You might be thinking, Dave, my goodness, Dave. Usually there, there are three things that come up. Dave, my entire family is broke. Everybody I know is broke. Nobody's got two dimes to rub together. Nobody I know could come up with $100,000 or $200,000 to invest in a real estate deal with me, okay? And I would challenge that. I would, I would say that, Virtually everybody I've met right within their phone, their contacts within their phone, you've got at least a million dollars worth of capital in there. We just have to access it. 
And that is this group of people, your, your, your sphere of influence. So you say, well, everybody I know is broke. That's untrue, especially in the GTA. If you know anybody that's owned their house for 10 years or more, five years for crying out loud, they have, chances are they've got a massive amount of home equity locked up in their house. They could use that, right? And a lot of time, if you've read, if you're familiar, you've heard of the book, The Millionaire Next Door. It's the people who don't look like they're rich who actually are the folks who are wealthy. And the people that really put on the show are all flash and no cash, all right? I've seen that over and over and over again. So don't prejudge. Don't prejudge anybody, all right, please. Second thing people say is, well, Dave, uh, I don't wanna mix business and friendship, right? I've heard in the past, Dave, neither a lender nor a borrower be. My grandfather told me that. My parents told me that. Don't borrow from your family. Don't, don't get involved in business ventures with your family or your friends. Okay, and I understand where that comes from because if you do not set them up properly and professionally, it can be a bad scene. So what's the solution to that? The solution to that is set everything up properly and legally and officially. Don't, you know, don't do a spit and a handshake. Don't do a hug kind of deal. Don't, you know, pressure, manipulate, or cajole people into investing with you. Treat it as a business relationship with all of the things that you would have in place as if you were dealing with a stranger and you will have success, all right? Third thing people say, well, Dave, you know, I took a crack at network marketing or MLM or whatever a few years ago, got all excited about it, ran out, told all my friends and family about it, got a few of them signed up, and uh, I didn't make my millions. No, none of them made their millions, and we all kind of dropped out and fizzled out, and I've kind of still got some egg on my face from that, okay, or some version of that. Well, don't worry about that. That's called life. That's called growth. That's called a, a growth experience. What I show my clients and my students is, hey, take that experience and use it as a springboard. Don't try to hide it. Use it as a springboard into what you're up to with real estate investing. Compare and contrast what you were trying to do with that other opportunity with what is possible with the new opportunity. All right. Hopefully that makes sense. So the other reason is this is I firmly believe that it's our patriotic duty to educate our friends and family about real estate investing as an investment class, right? It's our patriotic duty to educate them about it. Now, I didn't say pressure them. I didn't say you know, twist their arm. I didn't say bow, what do you call it? Brow beat them into doing anything. Educate them and allow them to make up their own minds. Allow them to make an educated decision about whether investing with you makes sense for them or not. Because we see this, especially today, the average Canadian's investment choices suck. I mean, just take a look at this graph. This is what happened in the last week for crying out loud. Trillions of dollars wiped out. People's retirement funds chopped in half virtually overnight in the stock market. Okay, is real estate cyclical? Yes. Does it have the same ups and downs as the stock market? No, all right? It's definitely not that kind of market, all right? So another great example here, you guys, John Simcoe, probably my most successful student and client to date. He's raised over $32 million for his real estate deals. Um, when John first got started, he did like the rest of us. He self-financed his first couple of properties, ran out of cash, uh, fumbled and bumbled around trying to figure this all out. He finally dialed it in on got educated about how to attract investors, how to raise capital, and things completely changed for John. He became a full-time real estate investor in, in record time. And what I want you to really listen to, what I, I interviewed uh, John a few years ago, and what I, I want you to listen to what he's been able to do for one of his investor partners. So first of all, listen to who he likes to bring on best as his investor partners and what he's been able to accomplish for one of them. And then we'll talk about that in a second. Have a listen to this. It was a big light bulb aha moment when I learned that I could partner with other people. So that idea was totally new to me before I had met you, Dave. And now, now it's something that I do very regularly. I, I actually prefer working with friends and family because I like working hard knowing that they're making a good return. And I like being able to help out my sphere a little more directly like that. So I really like growing my friends' money 
and helping them do something that they can't on their own. I get very happy investors, Dave. I've <laughs> got one client in particular and up where I'll be sending them enough money every month that they can actually be retired off the passive income that they, that they get. And so that just makes me feel really good because that's one of the things that I got into this to do was so that I could do that for myself. Now I have the power to be able to do that for other people. I love that example. So, I mean, think about it. Most of us, when we get started about this, we're, we're really just thinking about me, 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 right? How can I get more money to grow my portfolio? How can I create passive income for myself? How can I increase my net worth for myself and my family? Well, let's look at it a little bit differently. When you bring on a money partner, when you bring on an investor partner, you're able to help them do something that they're either not, they're either not able to do on their own because they don't understand real estate investing, or they don't have the time or interest to do on their own because they're busy with their lives. So you're bringing a huge service to that person. Now, John talked about being able to help one of his clients retire because of the passive income that they're earning. Well, that might, that might be a bit of a stretch, but I mean, think about it. What if you could help somebody that you care about uh, put their kid through university? Would that be cool? What if you could, because of the income they're getting with their investment with you, they could afford to have a nicer car. They could afford to perhaps take a, a vacation every year that they're not taking right now. What if, they, what if they could, if you could help them retire a few years earlier or quite a few years earlier than they could on their own? How would that make you feel, right? So it's not all just about us. It's about how can we serve through investing with us? How can we serve these people? So it's not about, all about they're doing us a favor. We're doing them a huge favor. And when you really focus on creating good deals and win-win situations, situations, you get very, very happy investors. This is Rena. This is one of our investor partners on that 54 unit apartment building. That's her getting her first cash flow check. She looked pretty happy. Darn right she does, right? So it's all about working with investor partners, investor partners bringing on money partners, using other people's money and creating win-win scenarios. A win for them and a win for you. And I think now in this in this self-quarantine phase of our lives is the perfect time for you to be reconnecting with people and starting these conversations, planting these seeds, all right? So again, remember, we got 200. That's our target group of people that we wanna focus on. And people always say, well, Dave, how am I gonna come up with 200 people? I don't know 200 people. And I would argue that, yeah, probably you do. So the first place we start is you get your good old smartphone, your cell phone, take a look at your contacts. Chances are you got a lot more than you thought you did. Export them all, get them into a spreadsheet. All right. Do the same thing with your email contacts. Export them all, get them into that spreadsheet too. If you've got an old fashioned book, you know, address book or business cards, get all those contacts, put them in the spreadsheet. Same thing with your contacts from social media. All right. Get them all into a spreadsheet. And then instead of having to come up with a couple hundred people, chances are you're going to start with a thousand or 2000 contacts. You're not going to know all of them, but what you can do is you can quickly go through that and sift and filter, keep, delete, keep, delete, keep, delete, and whittle it down to a couple of hundred people. That's the process we use with our clients. It's so much more effective and it works. So it really is very, very quick. All right. And then once you've got those 200 contacts, it's all about, communicating with them and starting to market with them. But here's the big tip. I want you to be sure to break the ice with them first before you start talking about business, before you start talking about real estate. If you remember my sad story about losing that deal, one of the things I tried was I spammed everybody I knew with the deal. Bad, bad, bad mistake, right? Don't do that. Break the ice first have a person-to-person -person human communication with them first before you start talking about real estate, all right? That's a writer down of there, people. Okay, so that's step number one. Step number two of the five-step process is once we do have people starting to put up their hand and say, hey, yeah, you know what? I'm interested. We want to make sure that we've got a really good and effective presentation to show them. We don't want to wing it. We don't want to try and write it out on a napkin. That won't even work now because we can't even be face to face with them, right? We're going to have to probably talk with people online or using Zoom or what have you. 
So you wanna have a really good, effective presentation. I'm gonna suggest a slideshow presentation. So kind of like what we're doing right now, a PowerPoint or a, I think it's a keynote with Apple, have a well-organized, well-put-together, concise slideshow presentation. And you can use these, you know, once <laughs> self-quarantine lifts, we can use this for one-on-one -on -one meetings in person, small group meetings in person, or better yet now, online meetings, one-on-one -on -one or in groups. All right, very, very, very effective. Now, when it comes to your presentation, here's a big tip. Don't try, don't just rush into real estate and how great real estate is because in the back of people's minds, they're thinking that the stock market just crashed and they associate the real estate market with the stock market. So we need to you know, address the elephant that's in the room, hit it straight on. Talk to them about their concerns about the market straight up, all right? So you wanna make sure that that's part of your presentation. Now, a presentation can be very, very, very effective, the right presentation. So for example, Brendan, Brendan was a relatively new investor when I started working with him and he had his first deal or two under his belt, again, ran out of capital. He needed to raise capital from investor partners, put together an investor presentation following my teachings and his very first presentation, he, got, he, he did it with a, an elderly lady. She loved it so much. She told a couple of her friends about it. They all saw the presentation too. So we actually ended up getting three present, three investors from one presentation. And that got him going to where he very, very quickly became a full-time real estate entrepreneur, all right? And nowadays with COVID, online meetings and webinars are absolutely amazing. In fact, just the other night, I had 4,000 people registered for a webinar, 2,000 of them on live. People want information about real estate right now. This is the perfect time. Am I saying you're gonna get 2,000 people on a webinar? Probably not, but what if you were able to get 10 people on a, uh, an online presentation or 15 people on an online presentation? That is massive leverage, all right? And you can do exactly what Claude's been doing here tonight. You can do a presentation via Zoom. All right, step number three of this five-step process. This is where the marketing comes in. The three C's of marketing, constant, consistent communication. We need to get the word out. And there are a variety of different ways to do that, both online and offline. And I'll talk about a few of these. So some of my favorite things to do online, top two, video logs, electronic newsletters or easings. Those are super, super, super effective. Offline marketing, one of my favorite things to do is what's called a shock and awe direct mail campaign. Super, super, super effective. So there's online, there's offline ways of marketing. The goal is here, folks, I want you to be, it's, it's, it's what I call edutainment. It's not overly educating people about real estate investing. It's letting them know that real estate is the way to go, real estate is solid, and that you know your stuff, all right? People don't want to get a whole textbook of education about real estate investing. They kind of want the Coles note version. They want to know that you know the details. Does that make sense? So if you do a good job with your marketing, if you learn how to market properly, especially using e-zines and, and video logs, then you're going to get people putting up their hands saying, yes, I'm interested. That helps us to, to completely eliminate cold calling. I never want you to cold call ever again. All right. And now is the time. Now is the time that you have the time to start and then also to double down on your marketing efforts. This is the time to be doing this, especially the personalized marketing. Because again, the whole goal of doing this is to attract people to us instead of pushing ourselves on them. It's to get them to put up their hand and say, yeah, you know what? You piqued my curiosity. I want to hear more about your real estate deals. That's what our whole goal is. All right. And then next step of this is to show your expertise and your authority when it comes to real estate investing, to be seen as a credible real estate investor. Now, there's lots of different ways to do this. Um, I think right now it's all about taking a leadership role. It's also about dressing professionally. So for example, if you follow all of these steps and you uh, set up an appointment with a prospective investor, even today, if, even if we're doing this online via Zoom, I would suggest that you dress up. 
right? Dress up, dress professionally. A couple of reasons. First of all, it shows the other person respect. And second of all, it elicits respect from them as well, okay? So dress the part. Even now, even if you're, you're hanging out in your pajamas all day, if you're gonna be meeting with an investor on Zoom, dress up, at least, you know what I mean. Business casual, at least. Speak knowledgeably, especially about your specific strategy and about the market. Those are the two things that you need to be able to speak knowledgeably about and succinctly, simply about that as well. Good looking materials, have a professional website for communicating with your prospective investors. And now is the time to take that leadership role. Now is the time to be beating the drum to the fact that real estate is the place to be. Real estate is the place to have your money. This is the vehicle. This is the best vehicle for everyday people. All right. Speaking of your website, make sure if you have a website, and I highly recommend that you do lots and lots and lots of videos. Just a quick tip. A website, an investor website with videos gets four times the interaction as the same website with just text. So video is king, all right? Because video is the next best thing to being there in person with the, with the person. Have good looking materials. You know, once the quarantine lifts, go get some professional headshots, get some really good looking uh, business cards. All of these things make a difference, folks. All right, another quick uh, case study, Sam Perrin, actually a, a friend of mine here in Kamloops, and Sam was a police officer. Sam always wanted to be a cop ever since he was a little kid. Uh, he was watching cop shows on TV. He got out of university, went into the police academy and the RCMP academy, became a cop, and quickly realized it's not as much fun as it looks like on TV, all right? So anyhow, he was a cop for years, and he and his wife, bless them, they adopted three little kids. I think the oldest kid was four years old, and there was a Three little kids, all from the same family, and all of these kids had fetal alcohol syndrome, all right? And they adopted the whole bunch of them all at once. Um, and Sam, Sam's just an awesome dad. He said, you know what? I love being a dad. I don't wanna be punching the clock as a cop. Uh, I, I wanna stay at home more with my family. So luckily, he'd started dabbling in real estate, and this is when he decided to really buckle down. And within a year, he was able to uh, attract enough investors and raise enough capital to create a portfolio that it didn't right away, it didn't replace his whole cop income because RCMP made pretty good money, but it gave him enough income to be able to walk away from the job and walk away from those golden handcuffs. Excuse the pun. He's a cop, handcuffs. You get it, right? And, and he's able to be a stay at home dad and a full time real estate entrepreneur. Why? Because he got the basics of real estate investing and he dialed it in for finding investors and raising capital. All right, step number five of this whole five-step process is once you've got a couple of investors, even one investor under your belt, you're gonna be able to start the snowball effect. It's much easier to get more of them if you've got one or two that you can show as case studies, all right? So if for you guys and gals out there that already have some JV partners, some investor partners, now is the time to be getting testimonials. Now is the time to be getting referrals because those referred investors are worth gold, all right? So get more money with referrals and testimonials. All right, you guys, we've been going through a lot of stuff very quickly. Let's do a quick review, and then we're gonna open up for Q&A in just a few minutes and show you how this can work for you. So again, real estate's the vehicle we've chosen. Capital, money is the fuel that our vehicle needs. Having investor partners is like having a sports car. It gets us there faster, we have more fun, and we're, we're just able to accomplish it so much more quickly and enjoyably, all right? Quick example here, Todd Mollahan. Todd was like a lot of people. He got off to a good start with real estate investing. He had three deals under his belt. He self-financed all of those, and then life happened. He got married, he had a family, he switched jobs, his portfolio kind of sat on the back burner for seven years, okay? Todd kind of came out of the days, he got educated, he came out to an event, he got educated about attracting investors, about raising capital, and he very, very quickly within, it was six months, yeah, he went from three properties, he added 18 more units to his portfolio uh, within six months, all using other people's money. Last time I talked to Todd, 
He had 72 units in his portfolio. He had become a full-time real estate investor. He created the cash flow he needed. He's created the net worth he wanted. He's creating his ideal lifestyle through real estate investing. Why? Because he didn't rely on self-financing. He understood that he's much, much easier to grow his portfolio by bringing on investor partners and sharing the wealth with them. That's the whole thing. We get where we want to go and we help other people get where they want to go by cooperating, by collaborating, by working together. And investors have all the money we could ever need, right? Even now, especially now, there's so much money out there looking for a good home because it realizes that the stock market isn't a good home. We need to educate people about why real estate is that good home. So like Robert Kiyosaki says, he or she who raises the most money wins. Now you guys, hopefully you've gotten value out of this. Hopefully this has opened your eyes to the potential, the possibilities. Uh, but I'm gonna say a little bit of, a of knowledge without action is worse than not knowing in the first place. So if you remember way back to when you were first learning how to drive, it was a quite a while ago for me, not so long for Claude, you young guy, but for, for some of us it was a while ago, chances are your parents didn't give you the keys to the car and a VHS tape or a DVD and say, hey, go for it. Chances are they got in the car with you or they got somebody in the car with you and showed you how to do it step by step. Well, that's exactly what I wanna be for you. I wanna be your driving instructor when it comes to attracting investors and raising capital. So that's why I'm gonna be doing this online virtual workshop, Saturday, April the 4th. I'd like to invite you to come along and let's really dive in deep on this, all right? This is gonna be the absolute ultimate shortcut for you to go from where you are to where you wanna be with your real estate investing, especially right now in this time of crisis, all right? Now, another quick tip for you, a little bit self-serving, but this is my tip for you. Take advantage of this time. Most of us have more time on our hands now than we have ever in our adult history. So turn off Netflix. Quit watching everybody's opinions about COVID on Facebook. You know, take time now to get the education that you need to really take off once the quarantine lifts, all right? So let me tell you briefly what's involved in this virtual workshop. The first thing is you're gonna get a full day of training, five, I'm saying five hours. It might be, it's gonna be somewhere between five and six hours of training. And I'm calling this Investor Traction in Times of Crisis. It's a virtual workshop, all right? So what we're gonna be covering, we're gonna be covering five big things in these five hours. First session is all about your audience. Who we're gonna be focusing on and how do we create that list of 200 people? What, how do we create it? And then what do we do with it once we've got it? Second session is all about breaking the ice, reconnecting with people. Don't rush out there like a bull in the china shop trying to raise capital right off the gate. What we need to do is reconnect with these folks on a personal level. First, we need to address the situation that we're in right now. We need to break the ice, warm them up, and we need to set the scene for having a meeting with us. And obviously, for the next foreseeable future, that's going to be a virtual meeting, all right? I'm going to show you how I'm going to go through this in detail during this work, virtual workshop. Third session, all about what I call your million dollar investor presentation. How are we going to present our investment opportunities to our prospective investors, show it in the best possible light without being salesy, without being high pressure, without being manipulative? How are we able to show our, present, our, our opportunities and get people to understand what a great deal it is, all right? We're gonna show you how to do this virtually one-on-one, -on -one, plus how to do this in groups online as well. So this is all about creating that million dollar investor presentation. And to make things a little bit fun, I'm gonna limit this workshop. I'm gonna, it's not gonna be one of these things where there's gonna be hundreds and hundreds of people in there. We're gonna keep the group small and we're gonna allow you to mix and mingle and interact with each other as part of this virtual workshop and actually do a little bit of practice while we're at it. So you can practice your presentation one-on-one -on -one in meetings you can practice your presentation online, which is what all of us are gonna be doing uh, for the next little while. And online presentations can be life transforming. Just take a look at this example. This is Marco Nava, a client of mine. 
and Mark was transitioning from single family homes into multifamily properties. He had a big deal on the go. He uh, had this 14 unit apartment building under contract in Edmonton. So the good news was he had it all tied up. The bad news was he did not have the money for the down payment. So he came and he said, Dave, what can we do? I said, all right, let's do an online group presentation. Let's do a webinar. So that's exactly what we did. We created his million dollar investor presentation. We created the webinar, we promoted it, we held it. And bottom line is that was for that first one, it was within a week, he was able to raise the capital he needed to close on that deal, all from doing one online presentation, all right? Now, that worked so well that about six months later, he found an even bigger apartment building deal, downtown Edmonton, got that one under contract, rinsed and repeated the whole online group presentation, the webinar idea, and raised over a million dollars to buy that second property. Now that's cool, but what's really cool is between those two deals, he was able to exit the rat race. He was able to quit his job and be a full-time real estate investor. And that's what this is all about. So have a little listen to what Mark had to say about how this whole process worked. Wow. Um, I mean, the first time we got together was when I had this big deal that I didn't know how to raise capital for. And you helped me, you were really instrumental in, in helping me see that through. How much money did you raise from the webinar that we did? We were able to raise 440000 which is what we needed to, to close on that deal. It's mind-blowing. Mind-blowing. All right, you guys. I'm going to give you a step-by-step -step tutorial on how to do a webinar when you come to this virtual workshop on April the 4th. That's part of the whole thing. All right? And so session four is all about taking that million-dollar investor presentation and let's get a few practice runs under our belt before we go out there, right? Let's get a few friendly ones under our belt first. And we're gonna show you how to do that, how to do that virtually. And here's what's really cool. When you do these practice runs, the way I show you what I call my ninja strategy, there's a very, very, very good chance you're gonna start raising capital directly from these practice strategies, all right? And then last but not least, session five is all about continuity, all about the marketing. Excuse me, because the last thing I want you to be is a flash in the pan, right? And there's a big mistake people make. They get off to a good start, then they fizzle out. I want you to keep going. I want you to build momentum. I want you to be front of mind with those people when time and circumstances change their mind and they say, you know what? I need to put my money somewhere. Where I've got it right now sucks. I'm going to invest it with the person I know who's doing real estate investing. And that should be you. All right. So that's all about this marketing, this continuity. How are you going to do it? I'm going to show you how. We're going to walk you through it step by step. That's at this upcoming uh, virtual workshop. All right. So what else you get? You're also going to get a virtual workbook. <laughs> all right. So for all of the slides, all the presentation I'm going to be doing, you're going to get the slides for all of that in PDF format. So you can follow along. You can print them out. Whatever you want to do, you're going to have that to refer back to any time after, all right? So you're probably saying, well, Dave, sounds good, but it sounds like it might be kind of pricey. Well, the real world value is well over $2,000 for this kind of event. If you've been to one or two day events, you know that that's a bargain. Usually when I'm doing this um, as a live event at a hotel, I charge a minimum of $97, but I'm not gonna do that. I'm going to charge $49, tickets are only $49 for this virtual event, for a couple of reasons. First of all, because we're in this time of crisis, I want to be able to help you out without it costing an arm and a leg. Second of all, because we're doing it virtually, don't have to pay for hotels and airplane tickets and all that kind of stuff, so we can afford to do this more economically. So if you're interested in that, go to investorattractionworkshop.com forward slash Voiron. And what I'm going to do here, Claude, is I'm going to copy and paste this and put this maybe in the chat room uh if i could figure out just I just one comment dave i tested it and it only works if you put the www in front of it yeah i'll just i'll put the i'll put it in here it should come up with the whole thing and if you could share that with the gang that would be great yeah it's right there all right perfect good all right sorry guys techie stuff there 49 dollars and to make this an absolute 
no brainer bargain for you guys. There's more. <laughs> All right. So the bonuses I've got for you are pretty spectacular. The first one is the more deals now deal attraction marketing system. If you guys remember when I first got into real estate investing way, way back in 2003, I did 18 deals in 18 months in a small market of Kamloops. All of those deals were by getting motivated sellers to call me asking me to go take a look at their house. Never used realtors, never surfed the MLS, never called FISBO sellers, none of that. It was all from marketing, getting motivated sellers to call me. I think we're gonna have a lot of motivated sellers coming out of this whole situation. Yeah. So this program is gonna show you exactly what to do to attract them to you instead of to the other guy. So in the past, I've sold this for as much as a thousand bucks. This is a free digital bonus for you when you come out to the virtual workshop on April the 4th. Another one is Insider Secrets for Raising Millions, a program I put together a few years ago with some very, very sharp people, including Russell Westcott, co-author of Joint Real Estate Joint Ventures with Don Campbell, July Ono, who went from zero to 500 doors in less than a decade, all with investor partners, Paul Blackier, Canada's leading expert on using other people's RRSPs, another $999 value. Yours is a digital bonus for free for coming out to the virtual workshop. And last but not least, a one-on-one -on -one clarity session with me after the workshop. You can use this anytime within a month after the workshop to help dial in the whole process for you and your specific situation, what kind of real estate you're doing, what kind of market you're in to really dial in the whole process for you. All right. So if we look at the total value of all of this, including the bonuses, well over $3,500. Again, your investment, only $49. If you go to investorattractionworkshop.com forward slash Boyron. Now, like I mentioned before, you guys, I'm going to keep this small and intimate. We're going to be doing this on Zoom meeting. That means you're going to see my smiling face. You're going to see my screen, but we're also going to be able to see all of the other participants in the group because I want to do virtual networking. I also want to do virtual breakout rooms. We're going to get you in a small group so you can network and you can practice and you can rehearse some of this stuff in a warm, friendly environment so you know what to do when you get out in the real world, all right? That's why we limit it to a maximum of 40 people. We've got five people who were supposed to be coming out to the live events in Toronto that are already signed up for this one, so there are 35 spots left right now, okay? Now, you might be saying, well, Dave, I got a little question for you, buddy. What the heck? <laughs> what are you doing this for, right? Why are you gonna spend a full solar day giving your best training, your best education, and only charging 49 bucks for it. Well, here's why. First of all, I love doing this kind of stuff. I love training. And I am going to show you exactly what to do and how to do it, how to do all of these five steps, how to go, we're going to go over all of this in depth. You're going to be able to go from this virtual workshop and take the ball and run with it. If you're a real do it yourself kind of person, go for it. That's great. I'm also going to give you the opportunity, if you want, to have me come on board as part of your team, right? We talk about power teams. We talk about having a good, uh, an, an amazing realtor like Claude on your team. We talk about property managers. We talk about um, property inspectors. We talk about finance specialists, mortgage brokers. What about your marketing team? I want to, I'm going to offer you to come on board as your marketing team for finding investors and raising capital. So I've got a couple of different options I'm gonna show you. I offer done with you, done for you services to implement everything you're gonna be learning at the virtual bootcamp. I'm going to make what I hope is an irresistible offer for you to take me up on it. But if you don't want to, that's okay too, all right? How's that for full transparency? That's why I'm doing this workshop, all right? So if you're interested in that, go to the website. If you're worried that it'll be a waste of your 49 bucks, don't be, because here's my deal. Attend the entire thing, and if you don't think you got massive value from it, let me know, and I'll give you all of your money back, all right? So it's not like just attend an hour or two. Attend the entire day. If you're not happy, let me know, and you pay nothing. Is that fair? All right. You won't get the bonuses, but you won't, it won't cost you a dime. Fair enough? All right. So we've seen John Simcoe, $32 million. How did he get started? He got started by getting this kind of training, all right? Brian Dagenet. Took this training, worked with me, raised enough capital to buy a sixplex downtown Ottawa right off the get-go. Paul Reynolds, John Wiles, 
well over a million. They already had tons of experience raising capital. They were just tired of chasing after it. So they came out, they got training. They learned how to attract investors instead of chasing after them. Right out of the gate, raised a million bucks. Bruno Jury, his very first presentation doing the ninja strategy, raised $200,000. Craig Lingard was always chasing after capital. Now he has capital chasing after him. He's got more capital than deals. That's the situation I want you to be in. Karen, Leona McKnight, the very first presentation, $80,000 raised. Aaron Belmore, a webinar, $673,000 raised. Two sixplexes bought. Uh, Marco Nabo, we already talked about him. One of my favorite stories, Jamie and Leslie Collard. These guys had two properties that they self-financed. They dialed it in, went through this process, came to the training, applied it, very, very quickly went to 47 units. Best yet, Jamie was able to quit her job, get into real estate full-time. Last time I talked, they're now at over 80 units in their portfolio, and that's less than two years, people. That's what is possible. And theirs is the kid, that little kid, smiling kid there. He's a couple of years older now. He's 15. He just bought a fiveplex without using mommy and daddy's money. He raised capital for it. All right. Where did he learn how? From mom and dad. All right. Where did they learn how? From me. All right, you guys. So this is it. Uh, if you'd like to come out, I'd invite you to join. And what I'm going to ask you to do, Claude, I'm just going to play a, a video here for a few minutes. If you want to gather the questions that have come in, I'm going to be happy to open up for Q&A. In the meantime, you guys, have a listen to what some other people just like you had to say about coming out to this kind of training. Dave is already over delivered. You know, it's just so much fun. It's just an easy going atmosphere. It's more than I ever expected. Learned a lot and I'm ready to go out and make some deals. I like the information. It's very actionable. Um, it's just, it makes it so simple that you can just easily act on what he's teaching you. Get in your vehicle and come. <laughs> yeah, fantastic. I think you, you need to be here. You need to take some time. If you want to do this as a business. All right, those guys, <laughs> kind of funny, Claude. All of those folks, this was a few years ago, they all paid $2,000 and came to Kamloops for that training. I'm doing a virtual version of this. It's 49 bucks. Um, I, I, I can't wait to see the kind of results people are going to get from this. I'm looking forward to it. Thank, thanks so much, Dave. Um, so like you said, I, I put together uh, some of the questions that have been asked uh, both in the chat as well as in the Q&A section. So one of the first ones, I'm sure you get this a lot, is uh, how do you build trust when you don't have a prior portfolio to show investors? All right. Well, that's a really, really, really good point. So there's a, here's, some, here's some ground rules for who this workshop's ideal for. You don't necessarily have to have a lot of experience or a lot of deals on your belt, but you have to understand the basics of real estate investing. So you need to know what strategy you're going to be applying and what market you're going to be investing in. If you're brand new to real estate investing, if you've never done a deal, if you don't have a clue, if you're not sure if you're going to do, you know, the burst strategy or multifamily or you don't even know what that stuff means, go get that basic education first. Make sure you go to Claude's group, go to, you know, educate. <laughs> I love the name of your group, Claude. It's perfect, right? An educated approach to, to real estate investing. Go to clubs, get the basic training. Now, if you've got the basic training, if you have the understanding, but you don't have the experience, yes, we can work with this. And here's yeah, it's a very long winded answer to the question, Claude, but here's, here's the bottom line. If you don't have the experience, borrow the experience. And here's what I mean by that. 
in your investor presentation, you want to be able to show a case study of the kind of deals that you're going to be getting your investor partners on board with. Ideally, in a perfect world, you'd have a couple of your own deals that you've got on the go to show them. Now, if you haven't done a deal, then you're going to have to use somebody else's deal as your case study. Now, here's what's important. A, you're going to have to use this with their permission. So find somebody who's doing what you want to do and ask them if you can borrow one of their deals as a case study. You're not going to claim that it's your own, but you're going to use it as a case study. Does that make sense? And then ask them if they can provide with the numbers so you can show how it works. And then when you're doing your presentation, say, these are the kind of deals that we're going to be doing. Here's how it's going to work. Okay. Now, a better way to do it, that's one way to do it. Another better way to do it is partner up with somebody who's already doing the kind of deals that you want to do and either go in with them as a money partner on their deal and or go in with them as an active participant in the deal. So what I mean by that, find somebody who's successful at what you want to do and offer to work for them for free or offer to invest in their deal. And then you can use that deal as one that you've been involved in and use that deal as your case study. So for example, if you're working for free, ask them if they would give you just a little tiny sliver of equity if they're happy with your performance working for them. And then you can legitimately say, I'm actively involved in this deal because you are. Does that make sense? Claude, does that kind of answer the question? Yeah, it does. I, I mean, it sounds like uh, part, of, part of the answer is, uh, uh, is, the last part of the answer is really marketing. Um, similarly, on my real estate team, I have sometimes some newer agents who only have a year or two of experience under their belt. And, you know, I teach them the, 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 the most magical word in, uh, in sales and marketing, I think, which is we. Um, so, no, it's not Claude who's written books and teaches at U of T, but we as a team. Um, and it's, and it's true. We're all involved in it. So like you said, even if you were just, uh, giving some sweat equity or, or putting in some labor or putting in a little bit of, uh, equity into a deal, it's nice to then be able to say, well, on our last deal, this is how it went. Well, here's a deal um, I've been involved, I'm involved in, right? Exactly. Yeah. Um, very simple question. Um, uh, an attendee is asking what time the training on April 4th will be. Do you know yet? Have you set the time, the hours? Chances are you got time for it. <laughs> yeah, we're, we're probably going to have some uh, attendees from across the country. So we're going to start at, oh, it would be 11 a.m. Eastern time. Okay. 11 a.m. Eastern time, 8 a.m. out here in, in the West. Yep. So we can cover everybody. And it's okay. going to be approximately five hours, you guys, with bio breaks. Sure. Uh, so, okay. Yeah. Good stuff. Uh, the next uh, question, I don't know that you or I can answer this properly, but I'll ask it anyways. Is raising money in an investor club or fraternal organization legal? Yeah. I think you touched on that a little bit. Yeah, <laughs> I can't. I'm not a lawyer and I'm not a security specialist. My understanding is I've heard that, you know, if you're part of a paid real estate investment club, that yes, you, you can raise capital there. And that's, you know, Claude, I'm sure you've seen at clubs and maybe even at your own, you let people get up and pitch deals, right? So that would be raising capital at a club. I've heard that that's legal, uh, that that's okay, as long as everybody in there is, is educated, right? Um, so that, and as far as a fraternal organization, that I don't know. I okay. Don't know. And, uh, and that question was anonymous, but if that person uh, wants to reach out to me, I'd be curious to know if you're talking about fraternities or Freemasonry. So just shoot me a private message. Um, Adam has asked, Dave, what is the most important skill you should spend time developing every day if you're looking to find money partners? I think the most important skill is the constant, consistent communication, right? That's where I see so many people fall down on the job. That's, that's why we offer the done with you, done for you services, is to make sure that that stuff gets done. Because Claude, you've seen this in business and life and real estate investing. So many people get started, but so few people follow through. So it's the follow through, it's the consistency. That is the most important skill. And, and that'll be way more experienced real estate investors. That'll overcome people that have got, you know, more clout than you if you're just consistent. Yeah, I fully agree. Um, 
Ty has asked a question. Again, I, I want to have the, the courtesy of, of putting it out there, but I think it's better, Ty, if maybe you give me a quick call or we have a side discussion. Um, what do people think about a potential rent strike starting on April 1st? How can landlords protect themselves? Um, that's not completely relevant to, uh, to raising money. Um, but Ty, again, if you'd like to have a chat about that, I know you have my cell phone number. Give me a call tomorrow and, uh, and I can give you my opinion. Um, it's, a, it's a longer answer. Documentation, Ty. Lots of documentation. Yeah, I don't know how it is out where you are. Uh, it's a little bit more challenging here. The the, the province has said that uh, evictions are being paused. It's the same uh, thing here. Same we, thing. Same thing for we, you. We got an NDP government, my friend. <laughs> uh, and yeah. Yeah. Anyhow, enough said. Have, enough we'll said. <laughs> I hear you. Um, few people saying I want the slides. Ah. Um, is it a good time to invest in a house during COVID-19 crisis? I have a stable income and savings. Again, not completely relevant to, uh, to raising money, um, but as Dave and I think both said in our, in our sections of the presentation, um, I think during crisis is possibly one of the best times. Um, and if, you're, if you have the, the money to go at it on your own, fantastic. Um, if you have the expertise, even better. Um, if you don't have either of those, find the right experts to support you and potentially learn from Dave on how to raise, uh, raise uh, money for investors. Uh, hi, Claude and Dave. I'm a senior professional with over 16 years experience with some international companies and looking for mentorship in real estate investing. I'm definitely interested in thinking about starting to invest in real estate for years now. Would you think you can help? Claude, I think you'd be the, the better guy for that. Again, my, my whole thing is, you guys, I've got experience in certain narrow fields of real estate investing. My whole focus these days is on helping uh, helping real estate investors who already have the ABCs, helping them when it comes to finding investors and raising capital. That's that's my whole focus. So, Claude, I'm sure you've got tons of resources to help somebody who's just getting into the yeah, for sure. I'm happy to to assist. A um, couple more uh, questions popping in now. Um, ooh, this is a good one because believe it or not, uh, um, the person who asked, would this be effective for the introvert? Um, some people who know me well, I'm actually an introvert by per, by by nature, um, but I've I've learned to force myself to uh, to get out there. Um, how would you answer that question? Would this be effective for the introvert? Yeah, and are you just just are you seeing the screen uh, with the website on it yes, now? Yes, I'm seeing yes with the link. Right. So you guys, sorry, I will answer that question. Uh, when you go to the website, here's what you're going to see. So you can scroll down, see all the stuff that's included with that. Listen to a few videos of other people. Click on the big blue button to get uh, registered. You'll see that'll take you to a secure online registration form. Fill out your information, and Bob's your uncle. We get you signed up. You'll save your spot right there now to answer your Thank question you. about and Dave, sorry actually just so you, there was a follow-up to that question which was um meaning by that i mean is there an option to do fewer self videos ah okay good quite both good questions claude you said you're an introvert believe it or not i'm an introvert too <laughs> right? look at that we might maybe we attract each other exactly and <laughs> amazed at how many public speakers i know who are introverts yeah. so Yes, does it, yeah, it works for introverts. Now, you don't want to do video. Okay, perfect. You don't have to do video. I mean, it's it's true. Not everybody is blessed with Rad Pitt good looks and <laughs> the radio announcer voice and, you know, amazing wit and modesty like some of us. But <laughs> I'm kidding, obviously. <laughs> yeah, I got a face built for radio. It doesn't matter. So, um, you guys, you if you're not into doing video, you don't have to do video. I'm just telling you what works best. Now, I've got clients who are very, very successful. I got one without video. One client um, who just, he loves to write. So hmm. he does blog posts. He does newsletters. He does these electronic e-zines, electronic newsletters. Very, very effective. He's a good writer. And that's what he enjoys. Here's the important point to, your, to the person who asked the question. The important point is doing something and doing it consistently. If you don't want to do videos, do something else, but make sure you're doing it on a regular basis. Fair enough? Good advice. 
Um, two questions that are somewhat similar and, uh, and, and you can try to answer them, Dave. Uh, from John, hi Claude and Dave, how do the investors get repaid? Are they lending funds like a bank or buying a percentage in the property? And, and I know that's not exactly about raising the funds, but I'm sure you hear this, so maybe you have an answer. And the answer is yes. <laughs> all, all the above. Uh, so John, it really depends on your, on your specific situation. So at this workshop, I don't give you specific advice about how to structure your deals with your investor partners. However, if you want to talk about that on the one-on-one -on -one call, I'm happy to do that because again, that's all about really personalizing this for you, uh, coming up with your exact game plan. And the bottom line is it really depends on the kind of deals you're doing, how many investors you have per deal, what your long-term goals are. In some cases, it makes sense to have people come on board as equity partners, especially if you need help with the financing, qualifying for the financing. In other cases, it just makes so much more sense to have them come on board as just lenders for a fixed percentage and no equity in the deal, especially when it comes to RRSP, second mortgages, that sort yeah. of thing. So it really depends on what you're doing and what your goals are. And, and John, I suspect that uh, in the breakout sessions, there might be other investors who've done a lot of deal structuring that you might be able to trade uh, ideas with. Um, another question from Jared, similar, but a little different. What kind of equity or repayment interest percentage would you normally see when trying to structure a deal? Well, equity depends on how much they're putting in, right? So if you're, it depends on what kind of, what kind of deal you're doing, Jared. So if you're doing a single family home, it's going to be probably different than a multifamily property. If you're putting some money in and they're putting money in, then it's going to be different. Uh, so there's no cut and dried answer for everybody. Typically for single family homes and burrs and that kind of thing, what I see a lot of people doing is if you're bringing the deal to the table and the expertise and the work and they're bringing the money and they're qualifying for financing, it's usually a 50, 50 split. Yeah. I've seen a lot of that too. I usually uh, cut deals up into three different sections. So one is um, uh, finding or sourcing the deal, putting it together. Uh, second being uh, financing and third being cash um, and finding a way to divide up to reward those uh, those different contributions to the deal. Um, everybody else, I'm going to give you about 30 more seconds if you want to raise your hand or if you have anything uh, that you'd like to ask uh, Dave before we sign off. Okay, Otherwise, just, just make sure when you see the, um, the could, could you go back one screen actually, uh, one website, uh, click back on that website uh, or on the maybe on the other tab there, Dave. Just want to point out to everybody, make sure that you put the www in front. Otherwise, it doesn't work. Um, click, click, click on the link that uh, the Claude yes, that we the that we dropped in the uh, in the chat. Yeah, that's the easiest thing. Otherwise, uh, Dave, you'll be sending me these slides around when do you think for me to share them with uh, people who've emailed me? I'll I'll be sending them uh, later on tonight for sure. Okay. And I just want to say, well, first of all, we've had a couple of registrations come in, so congratulations to Tom. Can't wait to see you on the fourth. Oh, we had a whole bunch coming in. Um, Hope you don't mind here. So Sheila, Sheehan, welcome on board. You guys, if you're kind of thinking about it, I recommend, Mario, welcome as well. I recommend that you uh, sign up now. We are going to probably have a, a replay here, but here's the, here's the bottom line, folks. Um, I'm not planning on doing another one of these anytime soon. And I am planning on doing a webinar to my house list of contacts next week so it's going to sell out we're limiting this to a maximum of 40 people uh, to keep it as intimate as we can in a virtual environment um, it is going to sell out if you procrastinate you're going to lose out and i don't know when i'm going to do it again and I, i'm not trying to pressure you guys into anything i'm just telling you the way it is i mean at, at 50 bucks a ticket i'm not getting rich on selling tickets to this virtual event um, but I am going to give you such amazing value. It's really going to make your head spin. I mean, just watch a few of those people on those videos on the website. Uh, listen to what they have to say. My whole thing is I'm going to show you everything I can in that one day virtual workshop. If you want to go out and do it yourself, you're going to be able to do it. If you're going to want the, the, the shortcut and the easy button and have somebody who's done it before and, and somebody who can, can, really make sure this stuff gets implemented and actually do it for you and do it with you. 
those are the services I'm going to be offering. Uh, that's kind of the what's in it for me for doing the workshop. Uh, but I'd love to have you on it. I mean, Claude, I know you've got an amazing group. I've heard, I haven't had the pleasure of speaking for your group until now, but I've heard nothing but great things about you and, uh, and your group. And I mean, an educated approach to real estate investing is, is what it's all about. So if you guys are interested in getting educated about attracting investors and raising capital, if you'd like the idea of having people reaching out to you, texting, emailing, you know, direct messaging you about your deals instead of you chasing after them, groveling after their money. If you like the idea of being positioned as an expert authority in the eyes of your prospective investors, then this, this is the training that's really for you, all right? Uh, but again, please come to this training. It's not an ABCs of real estate investing training. This is an advanced training. This is for people who want to do bigger, more deals or bigger deals. So you either already have to have some experience or at the rock bottom least, you need to understand what real estate investing is all about and how to do it, all right? You need to have the basic education first. This is not elementary school real estate investing. This is, this is an advanced level college course for real estate investing, specifically about raising capital. Claude, does that make sense? Makes a lot of sense. All and right. I, well, and I, I, might, I might not even show up uh, wearing a hoodie next time. I might even put on a nice uh, college shirt. <laughs> uh, Dave, really appreciate it. I know it's still uh, early-ish for you. Hopefully you, uh, you have a nice dinner planned for tonight. We'll be eating in. Okay. I think like a, like a lot of smart people. Um, really appreciate your time, uh, uh, Dave. I'm, I'm already uh, missing the days when we could shake hands normally with people. Um, which is what I'd like to be doing now. Well, we could do a virtual high five. Indeed, indeed. <laughs> Thanks, Dave. I'll see you uh, in, uh, what, less than two weeks. We'll see you on April the 4th, my friend. All right. Take care. All right. Thanks. Thanks, everybody. Thanks for tuning in, everybody. It's been a lot of fun. Thanks for your questions. Good night. Good night.